Hey guys, it's Richard at Fish and Idol Channel and Reefs.com. Thanks for joining us, and I'm with my good friend Richard Rail. How's it going, buddy? Doing well. How are you? Good, good. And this episode is about covering your tank. It is my belief that all tanks should be covered, and my buddy here, Richard, agrees. Definitely. So why would you why would you cover your tank? Uh, I would make sure that my tank is covered if you have any fish that you even think might have the possibility of jumping out, and you would be surprised at the kind of fish that would be jumping. It's not just wrasses, is it? Right. No, it's, it really isn't. I mean, just a couple of days ago, I was talking to my buddy, another YouTuber named Devin Rich of Reef Dudes, and he's blew through a trigger jump, and he's like three, four inches. He's a big, hefty guy. Yeah, angelfish have also been known to jump yeah. just for any reason at all, especially if you're feeding fish. Yep. So clownfish, blennies, gobies, they all jump. Last and you know these these fish are our pets, you know, and we grow fond and attached to them. Last thing you want to do is come back home from work and find them in the dry, crispy mummy or your dog or cat gnawing on them. It's it's heartbreaking. Right, and a screen is a very inexpensive thing to add to your aquarium, and it just adds peace of mind. Yep. So there are many type of uh, screens that's out in the market. Um, I actually am very proud that some of the manufacturers, uh, tank manufacturers are actually offering them with their tanks. Like I know the Red Seas are uh, now doing them. Innovative Marine now ha offers them as well. Right. And a couple of them, you know, the, there's actually good professional companies that actually make for you as well. The one of them that I have recently dealt with called Top Lids, and they make this fancy acrylic uh, style lids that's, you know, you could make it you right. customize it however you want. You yeah, and those are perfect for, uh, for for rimless tanks as well. Oh yeah, rimless, yeah. any kind of you know thing. Any it can make it for any applications. Um, but there's a lot of different type of DIY type of ones. Right. And you know, reason why I invited my good friend Richard here because I have a talent skill level of a tree stomp. <laughs> so I invited him over because he's gonna help me to design a DIY uh, mesh kit for in a bit of marine. 20 gallon lagoon. Right, but we're not gonna just go out and use a regular DIY from Home Depot. We're gonna use this company right here, yep. which is a new one for me. Yep. Tell me a little bit about this, this because I understand that uh, the rim itself is a little different. D&D Aquariums actually has been around for a while. They actually make salt, and they're actually pretty big in Europe. Um, but you know, for, for many of us, you know, we ha may have not heard of them unless until you're in the industry, but they're a very good, reputable brand, and I'm actually very happy to see them jumping in to you know, making this, because you know, I think everyone can, can use this and utilize to, this, uh, to their aquarium. All right, so this seems like a pretty good kit. Uh, pretty much everything is ready for you, so you don't have to be running to the store to grab different things. Let's find out what's on the inside here. We've got our frames. We've got our spline. We've got our spline tool. And most importantly, we have our netting. This is a really good netting as well because this is a clear monofilament and it looks like it's a quarter inch square. So unless you've got really, really tiny fish, this is going to keep everything inside. All right, before we get started, um, what, are, what are some of the tools that we need, Rick? Well, there are a few things that are missing out of the kit that you're gonna wanna make sure you have. First thing, most importantly, is a hacksaw because okay. that is a good quality aluminum frame. Yeah. And uh, so you're gonna need something good to cut through it. You will also need a tape measure. Right. Make sure that you measure properly. Uh, a good hobby knife or an X-Acto knife in order to cut through. A pair of scissors. The spline tool that comes with the kit, yeah. and I also use a cutting tool so that I can cut the spline straight. Oh, gotcha. And just in case you don't have it, make sure you have a Sharpie marker. There you go. <laughs> Very
All right, so you've seen me cutting the pieces, and uh, what you probably didn't notice is when I was cutting these, mm -hmm. I measured your tank, and it was 66.3 centimeters wide, okay. and it was 28 and a half centimeters, you know, long ways. So, what was the tip that you had about the uh, covering for the? the length, the measurement for the... Well, you have to remember to take into account the length of your side, your corner pieces here. And much, these these are 1.8 centimeters each, so you have to double that because you've got two, you've got one on either side. So you, right. have, to, you have to subtract three and a half, 3.6 centimeters from whatever your measurements were. Gotcha. So if you don't do that, suddenly you've got a fitting that's much wider and longer than it was supposed to be. Gotcha. We did remember, though. Perfect. So putting these together is actually really easy, especially with these new ones that you've got right here. They mm -hmm. sit on the rim. You just have to remember to take the long side here. You know, this is one thing that I really like about this D&D uh, &D product is mm -hmm. that it actually sits on a rimless. So it's, it, it makes it much more attractive. It doesn't sit on top like how mine is right now, you know, and then it just, just sits right by the lip. The term that I'm looking for is flush. Yeah, it it's is. It's just flush right on, the, right on the lip, so it looks really nice. Yeah, and another thing that's nice with this particular set is as I was cutting it, I noticed it does have protective tape on the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. which keeps any little nicks and scratches from coming off as you're cutting, uh, especially if you're using an older blade. So when we're done with this, we'll be able to peel this tape away and you'll have a nice, prof a nice professional finish. Nice. And again, I'm just matching the edges here. So we are ready to set in our screen and our spline. Mm -hmm. And we will also have a couple handles that we'll put in here to make it easy to remove since it is a flush piece. Yep. You're going to want to be able to have something to lift it off with. Gotcha. As you're doing a rough cut, you definitely cut more than uh, what you're expecting. And uh, you give it a couple extra inches because you'd be surprised. You'd think that you've uh, cut spare and then you get to the end and you realize that you've got just a little bit missing somewhere. So. You're much better off cutting over and then trimming with your hobby knife later on. Now, as you push the spline into the groove, you'll notice that the tool actually stretches the spline material. And you usually wind up with a little bit more spline material than you thought you had. So you trim at the end. What are the purposes of those black rubber? That is the spline. That's okay. what's keeping the that screen. Yeah, that's what's keeping the screen inside the grooves. Gotcha. And that's what I was saying that as you uh, as you push the spline in, what you're actually doing is you're stretching it a little bit at the same time. So you'll measure it, and then when you get to the end, you'll realize that you had more spline than you thought because it's been stretched out. Okay. So these don't have to be 100% perfect. They don't have to go to the very corners. They just have to be enough in there to hold the screen in place. And especially, the reason I say not too tight is because as you're putting your spline in, if you pull the netting too tight, you're gonna wind up warping the aluminum frame and it's not gonna sit perfectly flush. That's not really gonna change anything major. It's not gonna hurt your tank in any way. But if your goal is to have a nice flush screen that looks aesthetically pleasing, then you're not gonna have what you were hoping for. So you pull it tight, but you don't pull it so tight that it's hard to put the, sp put the spline in. And once we're done with the screen, all that's left to do is trim the excess on all four sides so it's not hanging over. Uh, it is best that you do this with a craft knife with a brand new, very sharp blade. And there we have it. One finished screen, nice and tight. The spline is tucked in well, and with this new product here, you've got nice handles that you can pull out. All we have to do is just remove the plastic tape so that you get a fantastic finished edge.
All right, guys, so we just finished building this nice little kit. Uh, Richard did a fantastic job. He has some nice pointers for you guys. Now, um, what are your initial thoughts of this unit? Well, um, I like this better than the DIY stuff that you would find at Home Depot. And the reason why I like this better is because it's wider mm -hmm. and it doesn't warp as much. The stuff at Home Depot, because it's a little bit narrower, it does tend, I was remember I was talking to you about how if you pull this too tight, it tends right. to warp the, the frame. Right. This uh, I've got this pretty tight and that is dead on straight. There's no warpage on that at all. And I realized yeah. after the fact that the reason why that's the case is because these are so much wider mm -hmm. and they just offer more support so I love that I like these little handles that go along with it yeah um, this is gonna be good on any standard aquarium this mm -hmm. is gonna be fantastic on a rimless tank especially yeah. if you maybe have a rimless tank that has black silicone right, that's gonna right, look right. beautiful you know there was a, so many people that has rimless tanks but they wouldn't they refuse to have a lid because it takes away the look of the tank right but because this sits flush against the against the glass you won't you won't be able to see it no it so, actually sits inside a little bit because of that right. lip yeah so i mean there's absolutely no excuse now to have a lid in your tank to protect your fish yes and um you know i, I just i just really love the fact that they 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 count it for especially for rimless because i mean that seems to be the the popular thing these days yeah i know? think this was designed specifically for that yeah so i think they did a fantastic job all right, guys, so this is Richard Aficionado Channel and Reefs.com. I'm with my friend Richard Rail, and this has been a review on DND Aquarium Jump Guard. Be sure to check them out, cover your tanks, protect your fish. Have a good day, guys. Take care. Ready. All right, uh, so we got the measurements, right? So we have the measurements and we've cut our pieces <laughs> and now we're going to put it together and let me show you the best way to put these two pieces together. Hey guys, this is Richard of Aficionado Channel and a Aficionado and Aficionado. Jackie Chan bloopers.